AP Seminar Task 1 Practice Cristo Rey Newark High School. My group and I will be discussing global warming and climate change through our slides presentation. Our main question throughout our presentation is due to increasing demands in renewable energy, why is the United States still dependent on fossil fuels if they have a significant impact on the environment? Starters, what is global warming? Global warming is the gradual increase in the overall temperature of the Earth's atmosphere. So looking through the environmental perspective, how can that, uh, through global warming, uh, affect the environment in negative impact? 81% of the United States' total energy comes from oil, coal, and natural gases. These can be used in a negative way when burned because they release CO2 carbon emissions. They are negative to the environment because they're the main contributor to global warming. Releases nitrogen and sulfur oxides. Drilling and mining disrupt the natural landscape, so this deprives vegetation from the ground. Through this image, we have we're going to break this down through the illustrator's perspective on what the illustrator wants the viewer to grasp. We can see a man wearing a suit. What is this man supposed to represent? We can see two sides that he can pick. He can either pick a, a land that's full of carbon emissions or a healthy environment. So this is not just another example of climate change. This is a climate choice. As my peers stated, global warming has a severe impact on our environment. However, it also has a severe impact on our military, which in turn puts our national security at risk. Global warming causes high tide flooding, and military bases along the East Coast have, are at risk of rising sea levels. For example, Camp Lejeune, one of the military's largest bases, was severely affected by, during Hurricane Florence. In order to ensure the protection of our national security, our military requires operative and secure bases. To solve the problem global warming has caused, the military has turned to using renewable energy. They spent $14.8 billion in renewable energy in 2013. Um, how is the government working in order to fix the issues of global warming? Well, the Environmental Protection Agency is an independent agency of the United States federal government. They aim to provide clean air, clean water, and a clean environment for the citizens of the United States through the laws they enforce. I will go in depth on three laws that the EPA has enforced, the Clean Power Plan, the Clean Air Act, and the Energy Independence and Security Act. The Clean Power Plan aims to reduce carbon emissions by 2030. Each state varies on how they can achieve this goal. This plan also utilizes renewable energy in order to reduce CO2 emissions. The Clean Air Act aims to control air pollution. The EPA has established the National Ambient Air Quality Standards in order to regulate the most harmful emissions. Each emissions, each pollutant stated has its own regulations and standards. Finally, the Energy Independence and Security Act aims to use more renewable energy and burn less fossil fuels. It also aims to improve our lighting efficiency. Our lighting efficiency can be, can be improved by 70% by discontinuing the use of incandescent light bulbs. Also, this plan plans to use more biofuel, exactly 36 billion gallons of biofuel by 2022. Biofuel is fuel obtained from natural resources to plants and animal fats. In today's society, there are many people in this nation, even across the country, that are coming up with many technology advances and ideas that can advance our technology. A way that we are able to do this as human beings is to not only keep our planet safe, but keep our planet clean. And we are terribly doing a terrible job at this. A way to fix this is by implementing solar panels and wind turbines in our everyday lives. Not only does it help with the reduction of fossil fuels, it also gives people job opportunities in today's society. Solar panels is a device that is created in order to take the sunlight's energy and create electricity. A reason solar panels have a huge impact in our society today is because it helps with the reduction of fossil fuels. It does not place any harmful emissions in our environment and it reduces the electricity use. In addition, it is shown that there are no emissions of harmful gases. 
If any of you guys didn't know, fossil fuels create an, an invisible blanket around our planet that traps the sun's heat and makes global temperature rises and climate change, which causes global warming. Now, if you know about our STEM fact, there are many, many people that are being implemented in the STEM field, which is mathematics, science, etc. So with the implementing of solar panels, we are able to have more job opportunities for these people that are interested in this field. It is said that the solar energy employed 260,077 workers this year, an almost 25% increase from 2015. Furthermore, a report states that 187,117 workers are employed at natural gases, natural gases companies compared to the 374 people in the solar industry. This means that there will be an increase in jobs for people, not only for those who are in the STEM field, but for mechanics as well. Now we're going to move on to the wind turbines. This establishment has been around for many of years, but it has been implemented in today's society as well. In simple terms, a wind turbine is the simple fashion of a fan, but it's just more bigger. Unlike fans, the electricity that we use, we take the electricity from the wind in order to make electricity. Wind turbines has a blade in which it is connected to a generator and makes electricity. This helps with the reduction of global warming because it is formatted for energy to be solar and it aids with the uneven heating within our, our globe. The relations between wind turbines and employment is because the demands for wind turbines have increasingly been implemented in today's world. According to the AWE, also known as the Wind and Wind Industry Association, we are estimated at 85,000 Americans are currently employed in the wind power industry and related fields. Many of these workers are found in the southwest and northwestern regions. For example, regions like Texas, Iowa, and California, which are the leading states with the use of wind power. To further elaborate off of what my um, team member previously stated, the Paris Agreement. This agreement was established on December 12, 2015 by parties of the UNFCCC. This stands for United Nations Framework Conventions on Climate Change. And they basically aim to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change. And they also wanted to, to reaffirm the obligations of developed countries to developing countries so that they could financially support them to help build clean, climate resilient futures. You're probably wondering how Paris was going to do this. Well, there are more than 190 countries in the world that are currently included in the Paris Climate Agreement. And, they, and their main goal was to ultimately keep the global temperature rise well below two degrees which is above pre-industrial levels. Unfortunately, the only country in the, in the world that is not a part of the Paris Climate Agreement is the United States. And this is because of our president, Donald Trump. He withdrew the United States out of the agreement in June 2017 following his election. He believed that this agreement was not, a, not fair to Americans and American workers. Fortunately, there are still people who are aware of the risk of climate change, The we are still in movement. There are currently 2,161 businesses and investors, 280 cities and counties, 347 colleges and universities, 52 cultural institutions, 28 healthcare organizations, 40 faith groups, 10 states, and 9 tribes that are included in the we are still in movement. This movement aims to do what Trump couldn't. They aim to keep to the terms and policies of the Paris Climate Agreement. If we do not follow all of these acts, what will the United States look like based on this, this diagram? This diagram shows the number of extremely hot seasons per decade. Um, as you can see here, it shows what the United States looked like in 2010 and what it will look like in 2039. You can see that South, Southwestern America will be greatly affected by climate change, and so will Central America. We are past the point of realization, and we are gradually seeking solutions. What can we as U.S. citizens do? My team member will explain that. 
We can drive less and carpool and go solar. We can reduce waste and turn off the lights. We can plant a tree and replace our filters and our air conditioners. Most importantly, we can spread awareness. Global warming is not a conqueror to know before, but a challenge to rise to. A, a challenge, challenge we, we must rise to. Must rise to.